For the first step, we're going to take our three quarter inch flat brush and we're going to wet the bristles in water and then we're going to pick up and load our paintbrush with the light blue permanent. And we're using the back and forth um, motion here to load the paint fully on both sides of the brush and in between the bristles. And then to paint in our background, to fill in our background, we're be going to be using the wide side of our flat brush and some horizontal strokes to get those uh, to fill in that background. So a tip here when filling in our, our, our background is to apply a, heavy, a pretty heavy pressure on our brush to make the bristles spread out on our canvas. And this is going to make the paint that's loaded in between the bristles to come out onto the canvas as well. That way we don't have to load our brush all that often. Now if you want your background strokes to be less streaky and more even, then the way to do that is to keep working that wet paint on your canvas and go over it again and again with the flat brush, that horizontal stroke um, going back and forth, and that's going to smooth out those edges of your strokes and then you won't be able to see the, the paint strokes as much and it's going to look more seamless. I want to add a little bit of a lighter color here, lighter blue here. So I'm going to be using our double loading method that we learned in the course uh, to apply the titanium white to just one tip of our flat brush. So as you can see here, it's just on one side and it's going to give us that a blended paint look uh, that's going to be work really easily on the canvas. So now I'm going to use the same back and forth horizontal stroke to use our double loaded brush to bring some of that lighter blue into our painting. I'm going to add a little bit of green to the bottom of the canvas to mimic green grassy hills. So I'm going to take a little bit of the light blue I had at the top of my palette mixed in with a tiny bit of cadmium yellow and it's going to form a really nice green and it's going to give us a nice beautiful green grassy uh, hills in the background. I'll be using the same double loading method as we did before. So I'll leave the same amount of blue that I had on my brush. I'm not going to clean it off. And then I'm going to be adding just a little bit of that green to the one corner of the flat brush. And I'll be using now the same back and forth strokes to get that double loaded paint onto the canvas. And I find this blending technique works best when you don't reload the paintbrush with more paint and you're just working with whatever paint you have on your canvas. And you just keep working that wet paint until the blends are more smoother and you're happy with them. And if you find your paint on your canvas is drying really fast um, before you get to before it's well blended, then a tip is just to mist lightly with a with a spray bottle with, filled with water. Just spray the the canvas directly with that water, and then it should reactivate that paint a bit enough for you to keep on working it and getting those blends really smooth. So now we're going to create some nice green grass at the bottom of our canvas. Before loading paint onto it, make sure the bristles are wet with water. We're going to load the fan brush using a back and forth motion to make sure the paint is fully loaded on all sides and on the bristles. And then we'll use that same method we learned in the course. And we're gonna pretend like we're sweeping some crumbs from the bottom of our canvas towards the top of our canvas. And that sweeping motion is gonna create these wispy grass-like strokes. And once your strokes start to look a little scratchy, you can reload that brush and continue on with the same technique. And I also find too this technique works best with a little bit thinner paint. If you use a paint that's a little bit uh, thicker, then this technique won't work quite as well. So using a little bit thinner paint here will work, will work much better with your grass uh, to get more grass-like strokes. So we're just going to continue this all the way to the other side of our canvas. And if there's places where the grass is a little sparse and the background's showing through, just keep going over it with the same sweeping motion with your brush to fill in those areas. Here I want to add a little bit more depth to the grass strokes, so I'm going to be adding some lighter green um, and using the same technique um, on the canvas. So I'm just grabbing some of my dark green and then some titanium white and I'm just going to be mixing it with my palette knife to create a little bit lighter tone of that green. And then we'll be using the same technique we did before and just um, layering it on top to create some highlighted grass. 
and that's going to create a little bit more depth and dimension to the uh, to the, the the bottom foliage. And this lighter color really brings out those brush strokes with the fan brush, and you can see almost the individual grasses in the in the stroke. So the using the the lighter color over top of the darker color really bring more of that texture um, of grass into our painting. So now we're going to create some one stroke daisy flowers using two brushes, our flat brush and our round brush. Now before we start this step, we want to make sure the blue background is dried because we don't want the paint, the paint to blend. So the next step is we're going to load our smaller flat brush with some titanium white paint. And then we're going to be creating some one stroke uh, flower petals. So for this technique we're going to be using the chiseled side of our flat brush and we're going to start with light pressure at the top of our petal and then we're going to inc increase our pressure until we get to the bottom of our petal and that's going to give us that tapered uh, petal look and then we're going to repeat this same stroke all our way around the daisy flower. And I find with these strokes when first starting out, it helps to go a little bit more slower and more controlled. Um, and then as you make more flowers, your, your hand is gonna gain that muscle memory and it'll be easier to make them a little bit faster. But when first starting out, I find, I find from personal experience at least, it was more helpful to go slower and really understand how much pressure I needed to put um, in my strokes to get those tapered edges of the petals. And as an extra step, I like to add in smaller petals in between the larger ones. This is optional if you like it with just the bigger petals, that's fine as well. But you can also add smaller petals in between the larger ones. And to make the smaller ones, all you would do is add um, even less pressure on your brush and you'll create the smaller petals. This is one of the most useful tips I've learned so far um, from getting the most versatility out of your brushes. Um, before I would have multiple brushes in different sizes to get different size strokes, but then I learned that by just changing the amount of pressure you add on your brush on the canvas, you can get different size strokes. So if you apply more pressure on your brush, you'll get bigger strokes, and if you apply a little bit less pressure on your brush, you'll get those smaller strokes. I'm also adding some different orientation of daisy flowers. So these ones are more of a side view and they're pointing up towards the sky. And these are also very easy to do. You use the same stroke, but you're just going to be painting the petals um, almost like an umbrella shape. So here I want to show you that we can actually make the same flowers or very similar shapes using a small round brush. So if you don't have a small flat brush in your collection and you have a small round brush, you can use that instead. So with the round brush, we're going to load it using that rotating motion because we want to make sure the tip of the round brush stays pointed for this technique to work. For this stroke, it's going to be very similar to the one with the flat brush, where just the tip is going to be touching um, on the canvas at the beginning of the stroke, and then as you apply more pressure and you work your way down the petal, the, the bristles of your brush are going to spread a little bit with that pressure, and that's going to give us that petal look. So you can choose here for the remaining flowers if you want to use the small round brush or the small flat brush um, or you can use a mix of them both and just to get practice with both brushes and um, you can also experiment with the amount of pressure that you use for each petal. Maybe try creating some flowers that have bigger petals with applying even more heavier pressure and letting those bristles really spread out on the canvas um, and then you can also practice using a little bit lighter pressure and get those smaller flowers so you can get a very variation of big and small flowers in this painting. I'm just going to be going quiet for a bit for the remaining flowers and then I'm going to come back and show you how to create the center of our flowers.
Now for the center of our flowers, we're gonna be using a little bit of burnt umber or any dark brown you have with our small round brush. And then to paint in the center for the flowers that are on the side view, we're going to, they're gonna look like little domes. And then for the flowers that are front view, they're just gonna be little circles. This dark brown is going to give us a little bit more shadow and depth to the center of our flower. And then once it's dried, we're gonna add a little bit of yellow over top to make it pop. All right, so let's move on to creating some flower stems. Now, flower stems can be quite intimidating when you're first starting out because they're really fine lines. And I remember when I first started out, getting to this part of any painting when the flowers have been painted and then creating the flower stems was kind of nerve-wracking for myself because I found the stems when I first started out were a little bit thicker and more shaky and not as um, fine as I wanted them to be. And it turns out that just switching brushes really helped me. So when I first started out, I was using uh, a small round brush to try to create the, the, the fine flower stems. But then when I started using the, the flat brush instead and on its side, it made it much easier for me to get those fine lines. And so just the, the simple act of changing my brush um, really helped me get those, those flower stems more on point. So a tip when creating these flower stems is to use really light pressure on your brush on the canvas. You don't want to be press, pressing into the canvas and spreading the bristles out. You just want the edge of your brush to touch or the chiseled edge of the brush to touch the canvas at all times to create those really wispy thin lines. If you do want to create thicker lines, then yes, you would apply a little bit heavier pressure on the brush so the bristles would spread out. But for these fine lines, just the tip of your chiseled edge should be touching the canvas. Another tip I learned when creating these flower stems is to make sure your paint is fairly thin. Um, if you pick up paint that's too thick on your paintbrush then the flower stems might be a little bit more thicker and not as fluid and with those those fine lines that we're looking for. And it also really helps to move fairly fast down the stem and not to be as controlled. And what I also do is I make sure that I don't lean my arm on the table when making this, um, this stroke. I make sure the arm, my arm and elbow is lifted off. That way my, I'm using my shoulder more to create those fluid lines and it, it, that, that makes it a little bit less controlled and just more fluid. Here I've decided to add in a few wispy long blades of grass that go over top of the, the grass that we painted in the first few steps. And I'm going to be using the same light strokes with the same flat brush, but I'm going to be uh, going upwards with my stroke to create those uh, fine blades of grass. In my painting journey so far, I've found that flat brushes are, for me, the most versatile brush in my collection. Um, and we can see the example of it in this painting where we used a, a thicker, wider flat brush to paint in, in the background using the flat, wide side of the brush. And then we were able to create these daisy flower petals by using the chiseled edge. And finally, we used just the tip of our of our flat brush to create these wispy, flower st thin flower stems. So we were able to create multiple different techniques and strokes with one type of brush. And for the final step, we're just going to be adding a little bit of color to the center of our daisy flowers. So we're just gonna grab our round brush, our small round brush, and a little bit of the cadmium yellow that's on our palette. And we're just gonna go over the, the, the dark brown circles that we created a few steps ago. And we also wanna make sure the dark brown is uh, fully dried and the, the yellow paint goes over top of that, that dark brown paint. And yellow paint pigment tends to be a little bit translucent by nature. So if you want an even brighter yellow for the center of our flowers, then just wait for the yellow to dry and then keep on layering on top. Or alternatively, you can mix a little bit of titanium white into the yellow and that just makes the, the paint, the yellow paint more opaque. And this daisy landscape painting is complete. I hope you enjoy painting it. And I also hope this painting helps you gain more confidence and comfort with your brushes by using the beginner brush techniques we used in this project. Remember to keep painting and practicing with those brushes.